Well, they say nothing is certain but death and taxes. But in 2010, uncertainty is exactly what surrounds the so-called death tax. It's all because Congress has let the federal estate tax expire this year. So what exactly does all of this mean? Well, estate planning attorney Jason Smullen joins us tonight to explain. Thanks for being here with us. My pleasure. So uh, this is a little complicated. So what does this all mean? First of all, sort of sort this out for <laughs> us here. <laughs> well, we had an environment where we knew what the amount of an estate could be before it gets taxed. Uh -huh. And starting this year, there's no estate tax whatsoever. Uh, and there are other tricks and bells and whistles involved with that. Uh, and, but no one expects Congress to let it sit, though we never believed they would let it sit this long to begin with. And if right. they enact a law reimposing an estate tax, everybody's going into this uh, unknown territory as to what will happen and how much taxes they might owe. So what does this mean exactly? What was it before, like if there's a, for example, it was if your estate was valued at, say, 700000 is it a value has changed or is no longer there? Is that well, what it is? Well, it's uh, enormously so. Uh, way back when, 10 years ago, the estate tax was a million dollars. Right. Uh, any estate, if you had assets over a million dollars, you would get taxed. Right. Uh, that number had not been adjusted for inflation for a long time. When the new law went into effect, it gradually raised it so that at the end of 2009, or for 2009, you had to have an estate over three and a half million dollars for it to be taxed. Okay. So it essentially excluded a lot of people from worrying about an estate tax. So now by Congress letting, not acting on this, right. that goes out the door, and does that mean if your estate is $200,000, you still are going to be taxed? Well, not for this year. For this year, okay. you're off the hook unless they reenact, they enact some law and what its impact will be and whether it will be retroactive, which has a whole bunch of constitutional issues. Okay. But then in 2011, the tax comes back with a vengeance at $1 million. So it will then be at $1 million. Plus, if you have an estate, a million or more, you'll be taxed, plus the tax rate went up from 45% to 55%. So where before some people might have considered it a problem for somebody that was somewhat wealthy, right. this is a problem for everybody right now. And, and I, I would imagine a lot of people might think, oh, well, a million dollars, I don't think I'm, I'm in that bracket. But I think it, you would be surprised how quickly it does add up, right? Well, very quickly. What people don't think about is they have a home. Right. And if they've been living in this area for a while, most homes have some value, even notwithstanding yep. what's gone on lately. No, no, you're right. Uh, if you have any life insurance, life insurance gets thrown into the pot. So, and then if you have a pension, mm -hmm that gets added to the pot. So a lot more people than they think, a lot of people that might not think this is a problem for them, it really is a problem for okay. them. Okay, so what do people need to do in terms of planning? Is there anything people can do? Well, there's a lot they can do and it makes it much more important to do so now than it ever was before uh, because you just can't rely on a large number or what you thought was a large number. What typically happens is a lot of people, since each person is possessed with this $1 million exemption that they could give, mm -hmm. you don't want to throw one away by for example, giving everything to your spouse, and then when your spouse dies, there's only one exemption left. So right. one of the most important things we try to do is preserve both exemptions so that up to $2 million can pass tax-free to your children. I see. Okay, or so anyone else other than a spouse. Or anyone else. And, and who is best suited to, um, to answer your questions? I'd imagine you're a financial advisor, or, or who do you go to for the best well, answers the, that's for each person's individual needs? Right, right, right. The, per, the person that's most capable, in my opinion, of dealing with the estate planning side is an attorney that pre is a specialist or does a great deal of work in estate planning and estate taxation. Uh, that being said, consulting with your financial advisor, your accountant, they could also let you know whether you're facing these problems sure. and coordinate their work with the estate planning attorney. All right. Well, great. I would imagine it, it varies so much from person to person, so, so it's good to know where uh, people can go for, for some help with this. So, Jason Smullen, it is complicated, but it is something people need to be aware of because it, it could cost you in the long run, even if you're not the one around <laughs> still paying for it. So, thank you for sorting it out for us. We no, appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you. And we're going to take a quick break here. We'll be right back.